Part 4 of the old postal route covers the section from the Achterfontein farm at the 19th kilometer to the 28th kilometer. If you intend driving this pass, it's important to watch parts 1, 2 and 3 sequentially, which contain the Google Earth orientation clips, as well as other important safety, technical, historical and tourism information. Once you've completed your visit to the Achterfontein farm, follow the road along the right-hand side of the farmhouse, where the track once again becomes sandy, as the heading remains easterly for the next few kilometers. The road undulates across the rocky slopes, skirting a number of weathered sandstone formations. Rooibos plantations occupy all the flatter sections on both sides of the road. All of the route featured in this part of the video series falls within the boundaries of the Velbedacht farm. Please make sure that you take only photographs and leave only footprints. The track is virtually level along this section, but at the 21.4 km point, at the crest of a small neck, there's a fork. The better used track leads away to the left, which is the option that most drivers would naturally take, but this will take you down to another big plain filled with rooibos plantations, and even further along the ridge of a canyon known as Blomkralfontein Kloof, after which you will be seriously lost. It's imperative to turn right at this fork and take the lesser used jeep track up to another higher point. Once you've reached the fork at the top of the neck, the direction changes from north to east after you've turned right. The track soon becomes very stony and rough, requiring a slower speed as the road drops down the other side of a small ridge. From this point, there's a long section of easy and fairly flat driving. The road now heads southeast as it follows the northeastern lip of the canyon. You'll have a vague notion that the canyon is there, but there's nowhere where the road offers a really good view of it. The canyon, which is now on the right-hand side of the road, is known as the Achterfontein Kloof and is one of the biggest side canyons of the main one of the Turing River. The Cedarberg is renowned for its spectacular landscapes and the sense of solitude they inspire. Sandstone caves and rocky overhangs shelter some of the region's finest examples of ancient sand rock art. At the Mikey Nature Reserve, the eerie Stutzel rock formations are found where the presence of people long gone is still palpable. It is here too, not far from the Stutzel Caves, that the evocative elephant rock painting is found. The Cedarberg region, which is only three hours drive from Cape Town, and yet the landscape is completely different. Here it's wilder, warmer, with a raw dramatic beauty. Clan William and Citrustal with its towering mountains brilliant purple and orange sunsets laden with the scent of orange blossom in the spring. Close by are the coastal hamlets of Lamberts Bay and Elons Bay where their perfect waves for surfing, offer open air restaurants serving only the best of our seafood and have an abundance of bird life to be spotted. Wuppertal and Elonskloof, both missionary villages situated within these magnificent mountains, both have a wealth of history to be discovered. Enjoy the beauty of the Cedarberg in your own way Walk in the mountains with not another person in sight, enjoy bouldering and rock climbing at Rocklands, go and discover the beautiful bird life, or just simply get your surf on, swim in the clear mountain rock pools, or marvel at the delicate Bushman rock art. Or you can simply relax and enjoy the exhilarating peace of this unspoiled paradise. The Cedarberg has an exceptional botanical diversity, being part of the Cape Floral Kingdom of South Africa, and amongst the twisted rock formations, farmers cultivate the world-famous and healthy rooibos tea found only in the Cedarberg region of South Africa. The Cedarberg region has a great climate, with hot sunny days throughout the summer and mild sunny days in winter. As with most spring weather worldwide, the spring year is variable with some beautiful sunny and warm days and some cooler weather as well. There's a possibility of rain until the end of September. The summer weather generally starts around early November and is characterized by hot to very hot and dry sunny weather. The summers in the Cedarberg are much hotter than the rest of the Western Cape, so if you enjoy being active, we recommend starting your days early and enjoy a restful afternoon siesta or a swim during the heat of the day. The evenings are generally warm and most meals are eaten outside. Autumn is a great time to visit the Cedarberg, where the weather remains warm throughout April and swimming is still pleasant. Gradually the nights become cooler and the days are cool enough to enjoy more strenuous outdoor activities such as hiking. Always ensure that you have sufficient drinking water, a hat as well as sunblock. Be sure to watch part 5 of the old postal route.
Okay.